four games to spare and delighted a lot of people along the way. Now it was relax and enjoy yourself time as they took on Birmingham City. Mind you, they wanted to keep that unbeaten record. Peter Drury saw it. For history and for fun, Arsenal now uncatchable have four more celebratory games to remain unbeaten. Particularly joyous today, Jose Antonio Reyes, who is afforded a 10th Premiership appearance and therefore a Championship medal. Freddie Jumberg returns from injury so that Robert Pires gets a break on the bench. Birmingham looking to be amongst the nation's top ten for the first time in three decades are without two top men. They give David Dunn his first Premiership start for nearly four months in place of injured top scorer Mikhail Forsell and Ian Bennett keeps goal with Mike Taylor suspended. It's a party, but it is a party with a purpose. Arsenal haven't come this far only to let standards slip now. Champions want to be champions plus. And to do that, they have to go four more matches without losing. Today against opponents who have never scored a goal against them in Premiership football. And this is uh, David Dunn. Exchanging early with Stan Lazaridis. Steve Bruce is after his own bit of history for uh, Birmingham over the closing weeks of this season. Only eight times in the club's history have they uh, finished in the top ten. Lauren, Henri, Vieira, Bergkamp. Attacking clap in for Reyes! <laughs> Splendidly instinctive football of the type Arsenal have played all season long. Watchable combination of old and new. Dennis Bergkamp, perhaps within uh, a season of the end of his terrific Arsenal career. Jose Antonio Reyes inside the first season of his time here. And now Henri can run away from Clements, and he can run at Upson, and he's played a glorious ball in for Bergkamp, and Bergkamp towards Reyes and Bennett Klein. It's not just what they do, it's the way that they do it. Nothing normal about Thierry Henry. Savage. Twitchy one for Lehman, who's lost it. But Morrison couldn't force it over the line. Campbell booted it away from the line, and the referee had whistled to protect the goalkeeper anyway. It was a really devilish delivery from uh, Savage, making it difficult for Lehman. Morrison uh, caught as much of Lehman going up as he did of the ball coming down. Done the other, Lazaridis through the middle as well. Maybe done clear of Ashley Cole. Stephen Clements. Clements had a drive, very well gathered in by Jens Lehmann. Good secure handling by the German, who has found the Swede Jumbo. Jumbo just showed it to Lazaridis, and Lazaridis has got round Lauren. It's Stan Lazaridis. It's Clinton Morrison, and he missed his kick with the goal begging to be filled. Now Gilberto. Reyes. Birmingham should have scored one moment. Now Reyes is uh, inviting Jumberg to attack for Arsenal seconds later. But here was an opportunity for Clinton Morrison presented to him, courtesy of a mistake by Freddie Umbo by Stan Lazaridis. It was a, a simple take and potentially a simple finish. Morrison with a glaring miss after uh, 
Stephen Clemenson at least tested the goalkeeper from further out. Tim Keown will be acutely aware that Arsene Wenger has one more substitution available to him, and he would desperately want it to be himself. Arsene Wenger's done all the totting up as well. Martin Keown has to appear, if only for 10 seconds in each of the last four fixtures. Roberto for Lauren, and Lauren for Dennis Bergkamp to uh, thump one in. It's bounced out for Lazaridis. Campbell wanted some of it, Pires has plenty of it. And Pires has seen Henri, and Henri has a fair bit of space. It's Thierry Henri for Arsenal. Cunningham and Bennett dealt with it. Big bullishness from Campbell. Good spot by Pires. And then Henri uh, darting for the line. Cunningham and the goalkeeper improvising. Come on, boss. <laughs> Bergkamp. Bergkamp caught by Hughes. Uh, not enough to convince Graham Paul to pull at the spot. I've had a bit of a case, uh, Dennis Bergkamp. I don't know what else. Uh, they're ticking up to 90 minutes now. Arsenal need to get the ball into touch if Keown's going to get on. What's to happen now? This is going to be very, very popular. It's not the most natural substitution, Martin Keown for Dennis Bergkamp. But they are two players loved in equal measure inside Highbury. 45 minutes precisely on the second half watch, 90 minutes up. And uh, Martin Keown comes on for his seventh Premiership appearance of the season. There are three more available. He needs them all for a medal. And his manager's done him a good turn here. It's a nice moment. And Martin Keown is playing as a striker. What if he were to get the winner? Four years and 15 days since his last Premiership goal. Go on, dare to do it. Pires playing it in. It's picked up off Tevely. And Benet has claimed it very, very well. to pump it forward again. Vieira turning, the final whistle. It's probably not the game by which you'll remember Arsenal's season. It's a very good point for Steve Bruce. Still no one has beaten them. They have three games to go before claiming that little spot of uh, immortality in history. But the players won't save much space in their personal memoirs for this particular afternoon, which has ended Arsenal nil, Birmingham City nil, in Highbury's party atmosphere. The most exciting subplot surrounded Martin Keown. There was a lot of fun going on on the bench there, wasn't there? Yes, well, a lot of jokes going on because Ray Parler, you know, I had only one sub available and Ray Parler uh, wanted to scare him and uh, warmed up in front of him. Uh, and uh, so it was quite funny, but Ray is very funny, you know. Both substitutes had gone on and Ray um, suddenly came sprinting past me. Um, as if he'd been told to warm up, which, you know, was a wind-up, which I knew. And then he started taking his top off, and uh, that was one step too far. But, you know, Ray's a great lad. He's, you know, he's a great spirit in the, in, the, uh, in the camp. So I just enjoyed it. And the unbeaten record goes on, although Birmingham yeah. did pretty well today. And their favourites are ready for the championship again next season, aren't they, Arsenal? Yeah, I think we'd have to say so. And I think what we're looking at now, Des, is how this team's going to evolve. And you look at Jose Antonio Reyes, and I think that he's got a big part to play in it. I mean, difficult task. I think he's going to be the natural replacement for Danish Burkamp. And he shows glimpses of why they paid up ten and a half million pounds for his services. Good give and go here. Good, great skills, as we've seen. A little unlucky with his chip. And he's obviously someone who knows where the goal is. This time it's Burkamp who crosses the ball. Here's his run across the first defender. Just doesn't hit the target. But having said that, there is part of his game he's got to improve. 
I mean, you'll see he's not quite on the right wavelength with Henri. Henri needs that to his feet so he can play something down the side. And again, part of Arsenal's play is how they glide the ball forward, give and go situations. Again, he's not quite on the right wavelength. It'll take him a little time to, to settle in, but I'd have to say, I think this kid's got going to be a hell of a player. Well, they've had a great season, but the disappointment is, the, is Europe, isn't it? Yeah. That's the, they're still improving, Des Arsenal. There's still more potential. Still improving. Oh, absolutely. It's a young team Definitely. as well, isn't it? So I think, apart from Dennis Burkham, yeah, as Robbie said, he's young. the only one that you may have to look to, the, in the near future, you're going to have to replace him. I think there's they've still plenty of room for improvement. They've been credited as saying they're happier winning the championship than the Champions League. I don't believe them. Oh, I think it's important for them to win the Premiership again. I think it is. And I think the Champions League will come but it might just take another couple of seasons before they can finally get there. OK, thanks. It was perhaps inevitable that with the pressure off, Arsenal would relax against Birmingham. But they were almost comatose, sleepwalking through the game, only managing one shot on target in 90 minutes. The manager is expecting a big improvement against Portsmouth, even though neither side has now got anything to play for. We uh, take on board that it was a disappointing game because we, we played in a without any urgency, without uh, the speed and the pace of our passing and we want to get them back of course and uh, I think it was a little bit of a relaxation mood, a relief because after uh, you win the championship you know a few days after you're a little bit flat but uh, I am convinced we'll get back to our game tomorrow. His famous phrase two years ago that the balance of power had shifted away from Old Trafford came back to haunt Arsene Wenger last season now it's a three-way race at the top and Arsenal will have to work even harder to keep the balance in their favour. I think we have closed the gap and come, uh, come back and uh, to the top of the league. That's what, what you always want to do, but it, it's a big competition here. And you know, to win in life is difficult. And to win the championship in England is very difficult. And uh, so we enjoy it, but as well, you know, uh, every year the whole heart will be behind us again and try to knock us down, but we want to be better. For Martin Keown, there is one urgent matter to resolve. He needs to play at least a small part in each game to ensure his championship medal. He's been a tremendous motivator for the players, and uh, everybody here wants him to get the medal. It was, it was more a joke going on at the end of the game, and it was funny. Yeah. Maybe Keown should play from the start at Fratton Park to help motivate the rest as they prepare for the last three games of the campaign. Peter Johnson, Sky Sports. First, Arsenal are still unbeaten in the Premiership this season, but they had to come from behind at Portsmouth. Yakubu put the home side in front before Jose Reyes pulled the Gunners level just before the break, just after the break. Arsenal put their unbeaten record on the line against the Premiership's in-form side. And the champions threatened first, Ray Parler forcing Shaka Hislop into early action. Arsenal came even closer soon after, Jose Antonio Reyes denied by the crossbar. Back came Portsmouth, and they shocked Arsenal by taking the lead. Yakubu pounced for his seventh goal in eight games. Thierry Henry had the chance to equalise moments later, Hislop again in the right place. And Hislop was still doing it after the break. He managed to divert Henri's shot onto the bar. Arsenal didn't have to wait long, though. Reyes on hand to score his first league goal for the club. Portsmouth could have regained the lead late on. Yakubu in the clear. Lehman with the save to preserve Arsenal's undefeated run. They now have just two more games to negotiate starting at Fulham on Sunday. Damesh Sheth, Sky Sports. I've said it was a year ago tonight that you lost to Leeds. Did you think you were going to lose again today at one point? Uh, it looked difficult because uh, it was a real cup game and uh, Portsmouth defended very well and uh, we had the chance in the first half and uh, we were 1-0 down but you could see the character of the team. We refused uh, in the second half to, to lose and create chance after chance and uh, when you came back to 1-1, uh, we easily beat off again, but uh, I must say Portsmouth, uh, you could see why they didn't lose for a while, because they, uh, their confidence is high, they defended very well, and uh, they're physically very strong on a very difficult pitch tonight. 
It was a great night, wasn't it? Um, you know, to, to uh, have such a good game here and no real pressure and to play the, the champions and players we did. It was a terrific, terrific game. Great support again. The fans were fantastic. Do you feel you had them on the rack? Well, you know, half time I felt we came in. I thought we could win the game. I'd be truthful. We, you know, we'd always look dangerous on the break and uh, they'd been... They had a couple of great long strikes, but they were long shots in the main, and I felt half-time, if we kept playing forward balls to our front two, we could turn them round and cause them problems. But uh, they came out, as you would expect champions to do, and they, they came back strong. Then we had a great chance with Yak to win it, really, when he went through one-on-one. -on -one, you know, he, he'd be the first to admit he normally scores here. So, but, uh, you know, it was a good performance and a, and a good result. Quick look at the top of the Premiership Arsenal. 36 games played, 84 points, still unbeaten after that one-all draw at Fratton Park. Fulham away and Leicester at home stand between Arsenal and a season unbeaten. Quick look at the bottom. It's all academic, of course. Portsmouth, no worries about relegation uh, this year and they stay in 14th position. He can afford to smile these days, with the title sewn up and the unbeaten record still intact thanks to Rares' equaliser at Portsmouth, these are happy days for Arsenal. The greatest achievement is to win the Premiership, because all the rest is Cups and Cups. For me, you can be an average team and win a Cup, even a European Cup. I'm con completely convinced of that. Arsenal will get another crack at Europe next season, of course, but it looks like they'll do so without Sylvain Viltord. He's off to the Bundesliga, according to reports from Germany, although details from the Highbury end are sketchy. Sylvain Viltord is free and uh, free to talk to whom he wants, and that I don't know uh, whom he's talking to. So you don't know if there's any, any truth that Werder Bremen are? I don't know if there's any truth in that. What is true, though, is that Arsenal have been able to give youth a chance in recent days. David Bentley tasted first-team action in midweek, but protecting that unbeaten record remains the top priority. It's one of, of the, the negative sides of wanting to, to keep the record going on, because uh, you know when you go to Portsmouth, you have a, a game like we faced against Portsmouth on uh, Tuesday night. You know uh, you need experience. If you do have only young players, you have no chance. And, uh, of course, that's part of the, the negative aspect of our record. So Arsenal treading cautiously at the season's end, well aware that a place in the history books is tantalisingly close. Jim Cockin, Sky Sports. Maybe it was wearing the new away strip at home that caused Edwin van der Sar's indecisiveness. As the Fulham keeper gifted Arsenal a ninth-minute head start in their continuing incredible bid to go through the entire league season unbeaten. Jose Antonio Reyes chased down a seemingly lost cause to force the error and was rewarded with a second Premiership goal in two games. The champions in control? Well, not really. Most of the scoring chances from there on in went Man City's. Sorry, that should be Fulham's way. Former gunner Luis Boamorte was denied by Jens Lehmann, with a determined defence making sure Steve Malbrunk couldn't put the fall. Fulham looked dead set on being the team that would end Arsenal's record run. Some patient approach work from Sean Davis set up Steve Malbrunk for an acrobatic effort in the second half that deserved better. Fulham's Frenchmen were showing that not all of London's Gallic stars shine at Highbury. Another, Sylvan Legwinski, crashed a shot against Ashley Cole as the pressure increased on Arsenal's back line, causing a few more lines of worry for the manager. Even the title's not enough to keep some people happy. Ironically, the last chance went to one that was allowed to leave Arsenal. Moritz Voltz was inches away from his first Fulham goal, but couldn't prevent another Arsenal win. Now there's just Leicester left to go. Consistency is the most difficult thing to do to achieve in the job. And I think uh, the team can become immortal with that uh, somewhere because it's real huge history to achieve uh, in a, such a different championship like that with uh, rain, wind, good pitches, bad pitches, uh, teams who really want uh, uh, to knock you down. Uh, I, I, I personally believe it's a tremendous achievement. Be unbeaten all season, equaling Preston's achievement 
uh, in the late 1880s, 22 games only that season. Two more records to go for at the start of next season. First of all, the total unbeaten run of league matches. They're on 39 as it stands, Arsenal. Forest have the record in the late 70s with 42, so that could go in August. And the unbeaten run of away games in the Premiership, it's currently 23. It's Arsenal's record uh, at the... Uh, 2001-2002 season, or over the 2001-2003 seasons, uh, that of course therefore could go at the, uh, at the start of next season. Also, Wenger says it's a, a record, if he gets it this weekend, that will never be done again, that no side will go through a Premiership season unbeaten. So I, it's a I, me measure of greatness. I do believe that, Matt. I think um, it's, it's an unbelievable achievement to go throughout the season, mm. and I'd be very surprised if they even themselves, if they add to the squad whatever Arsene Wenger does in the summer, would realistically look at it and think that they can carry on and do it again next season, or anybody else uh, come to that. I think that um, it, it is quite amazing. Leicester at home on the last day. Mm. Football is a crazy game. <laughs> it, would be the most it would be the most remarkable. How can I expect to go a whole season I'll unbeaten? I'll have a turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just that's... want to check, guys. What a brilliant. <laughs> He is a Spurs man. <laughs> Lest we forget, he is a Spurs man. Thank you all for... I'm happy. I think, uh, yeah, after this year, which has been a good season, probably a better season than, than last season, uh, yeah, it shows a lot that, um, that I can still do it and I feel confident for next year that I can still play at this level. That, that's why I made a decision. And, that's why the boss is happy as well to, to give me another year and uh, yeah. Will next season definitely be your last one? Well, it, it's always difficult to say, but I, 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 I would say so. I think um, I'm 35 now, 36 next year. Yeah, then, um, then you should really think of, of retiring. But um, I see how it goes in the season, but I, I would say yes. Was there any particular thing that made you want one more year, perhaps another crack at the Champions League? Um, well, uh, not particular. Um, you want to win a, a, a trophy, of course, but the main thing is with, with this team. I still think there is uh, this team is, is getting better. Could get even better next year, and uh, yeah, you just want to be a part of it. You, you don't want to sit at home and, and see this team play uh, while you can still be part of it. And uh, that was the biggest uh, decision. Arsene Wenger does not intend to trouble himself with the comings and goings of the transfer market this summer. He's happy not to tinker with the unbeatable. I always said after the season, my best buy is to keep the players I have. So my first target is uh, to keep the team I have together. And uh, then I can really sit back and, uh, and uh, look for a good opportunity. But I'm not out on the market at all. They're 90 minutes away from making history, the first team since Preston 115 years ago to go through an entire season without losing. Wenger acknowledges the part Thierry Henry has played in that and is certain his star striker will not be lured away. I have not one doubt because uh, I think uh, he's as strongly linked with the club than I am and I have no doubt about my future so, so I don't have any, any uh, about his future. He's already thinking about the new season and he's resigned to starting it without many of his big names. He says he may even take an unpatriotic stance at Euro 2004. On a selfish point of view for the clubs, you would want your players to go out early of the Euro, no? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> France and England and Sweden and everybody knocked out. But uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, you know that's not good because you want your players to be successful, because you want, you want them to be proud of their achievement as well. So I'm ready to pay the price for England, France, Sweden, all going into the final. That's not possible, of course, but one more big performance from his players certainly is. The manager has such confidence in this team, and they in him. It's unthinkable they won't deliver. Jackie Beltrao, Sky Sports. Well, Martin Kieran will leave Arsenal at the end of the season after 13 years' service in two spells at Highbury. Kieran needs to feature in the game against Leicester to gain a third championship medal. During his time with Arsenal, Kieran has also won three FA Cups. The former England international intends to play on for another two seasons.
So one of Britain's foremost actors and comedians, a gooner if ever I saw one. Uh, Alan Davis is there too. Uh, gentlemen, I would imagine a bit of a party atmosphere this afternoon, uh, but if you go through this season unbeaten, Bob, in your association with the club, which goes back so many years, uh, where will this stand? Well, I, I think it does deserve, uh, Ray, the, the term great. You know, people have been saying, I've been having all sorts of letters and messages from people, you know, Man United fans particularly, about, well, you know, when you win the treble, you deserve to be called great. But I think everything should be taken in context. You know, what Man United achieved was amazing. What the Liverpool great teams achieved was amazing. And this, to go through 38 games in what I think is the most physical uh, league in the world, I, I, I think it is sort of a, not unique, obviously, because it happened in the late 1800s when there were just over 20 games played. But I also believe, of course, that it's the style in which they have played, which is which is for all of us who've been used to boring old Arsenal and, and everything else, defensive Arsenal, it's particularly nice. Alan, what is your sort of overall impression of the season? And sort of how would you be writing this down in your, in your diary when you come to chart this season in Arsenal's history? Well, standing by the pitch is interesting, because you know, when you stand here, it is a bit of a carpet. And my last memory of this team will be how they keep it on the floor for a whole hour and a half. In fact, the whole season, really, from the moment they kick off, they just pass it on the grass until the other team have run out of ideas, and then they go home. I think from the first whistle to the last, they get the ball and keep it. I've never seen a team who's harder to get the ball off. And they are the best team I've ever seen, and I'm slightly biased. Uh, I'm sure the pair of you would like to pay tribute to Martin Keown today, who's going to appear this afternoon in the match, we would, would imagine, and then is going to bow out and have been a fantastic Overrated. servant for... For Arsenal. Yeah, he, he's not been bad, I suppose. But, I mean, to be fair, he's a little overrated, Martin, wouldn't you say? <laughs> he's he, the lion heart. Yeah, he, I mean, he does deserve the credit. I mean, a lot of people will just uh, look at all sorts of images that spring to mind, notably, obviously, at Manchester United early yeah, in this season. Great, but, uh, <laughs> great, he said. <laughs> but, uh, you know, when you think that he came here as a lad and, and this was the club that made him into a footballer and then he went away to Everton, and then he came back, and um, he's been a fantastic servant, and, and it's a sellout. He deserves that. Uh, Alan, I imagine it is going to be a bit of a party today, and then when, uh, would I be right in saying that? You're just going to celebrate this great, great season? What, today or on Monday? Well, I was thinking of this afternoon for starters. Today? Today? We're all tense as anything today. We've got to win. What if we lose? <laughs> <laughs> we're all standing back going, oh, yeah, we're the greatest team ever. Unbeaten, best team since Preston. I saw, we might lose, so no, we won't be celebrating until full time, and I, then I yeah. think we'll be all right. I saw them yesterday, <laughs> Ray, I saw the guys at the training ground, and, uh, and uh, they've got it in their minds. They know how far they've come and what they've achieved. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen, even in our 71 side, a side as tactile as this, and, and as appreciative of each other and respectful of each other, and they know they're very close to something extraordinary. I don't, I don't think I'll see it again in my lifetime. Alan, Bob, you thank you for joining us on Focus. Though, I've always been tactile, Alan. So. Bye. Yeah. Bye bye. Uh, well, last time anyone ended the season with naught in the L column was Liverpool 110 years ago in Division 2. Preston did it in the 1880s, Liverpool did it in the 1890s. Over a 38 game season, Arsenal's achievement would be a supreme effort and it would take them to within two games of Nottingham Forest's record league run of 42 unbeaten. The best football in the country and sometimes I think the best football in, in Europe. And it's only to say congratulations on what they're doing I mean, if they don't lose today. I mean, it's uh, incredible how you can play 38 games in one season in the Premier League without losing one. Because you know that uh, every weekend it's, it's tough, it's difficult, and everybody wants to beat you if you are Arsenal, of course. Before we turn to England matters, we've been sort of debating uh, where the standard of this Premiership has been this season. What, what's your view on this, Peter? I think it's been a really good uh, Premiership uh, season. Um, I think Arsenal has just totally blown it away. Um, I think Manchester United and Chelsea has just followed right behind and then behind them it's been really exciting. It could have been anyone going into the fourth, uh, fourth position. It could have been anyone being involved in the relegation and that's been very interesting. Do you concur with that Mark? I think it's been intriguing and, and exciting but in terms of quality no. Um, it's not Arsenal's problems, they've been fantastic but Bol Bolton win today Newcastle failed to win, Bolton finished sixth with, it, with a negative goal difference and I think the top three teams very, very good. I think the rest of the teams quite ordinary. Sven, ordinary, what do you think of the Premiership this season? Well, the Premier, Premier League is very difficult uh, because all teams are very good. The quality, well, I, I don't know. 
it's it's very difficult if you see Italian football and compare it with uh, with uh, the football in the Premier League because it's quite different. Uh, I went to see uh, during the week uh, Southampton Newcastle, mm. and uh, I don't know how many chances to score you have b both sides, and it takes ten seconds. It's a chance there, then it's a chance there, and it's great for the fan fans. It has nothing to do with Italian football because there you might play twenty minutes without you see a shot of goal because they're defending much <coughs> much more than in the Premier League. So I like to go to see it and uh, um, I think the quality is good. Um, let's talk <coughs> about your squad now. First of all, an enforced change which um, I'm sure you're very disappointed about. Brian Kidd isn't going to be able to make it. He's not recovered sufficiently from his prostate cancer and Steve McLaren's going to take over. Uh, first of all, I'm sure you're disappointed. How is Brian? Well, I have uh, been uh, speaking to Brian a lot of times after his operation and um, it looks at a certain point that he was ready but <clears throat> after discussing with him and, and so on he preferred not to come and I think it was very fair from him to do, do like that because he didn't think he was 100%, should be 100% in, in Portugal. I hope he recover very quickly and uh, after the Euro we'll see again. Yeah, absolutely, so everyone wishes him well. Now, so they're talking about the Arsenal again. Um, how's Sol Campbell and the rest? How are they going to stop Thierry Henry with this Arsenal little uh, sort of quintet of <laughs> That's players? That's a good question. Yeah, yeah. So, so what do you tell him? Well, I don't know how to stop Henry, uh, really, because uh, if you give him space, uh, he will kill you. If you can turn up with a ball one, one, one against one situation, <laughs> you can't find a defender quick enough to, to, ca to, to cover with him. So it's, uh, you have to be very short as a team and you have to have a very good communication between central defenders and central midfielders so we don't find the space there. Mm. It's better that he finds space outside somewhere. Sven, we've and got hundreds I of hope, questions. I hope Campbell will tell him, go out, <laughs> go outside. <laughs> Give the problem somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, just one other thing before we go any further. How many decisions have you to make? I'm sure you're not going to share it with us now, but how many decisions do you have to make or do you know in your mind what it all is and sort of how many agonizing things do you have to consider? This yes, weekend? in this moment, yes, but there are a lot yeah. of games this afternoon, so we'll see what's happening after that and uh, then on Monday we have to decide. We thought when the season started that we were very good covered with central defenders for different reasons. Rio Ferdinand is out, <coughs> Woodgate is out and maybe even Southgate. And that the, there are three very experienced central defenders. So that's a pity, of course. So hopefully Terry and Campbell will stay fit today. Yeah, let's hope so. Yeah. Uh, not quite the day we'd expected today in regard to what the final premiership results of the season would resolve. One, two, three, four, decided. A Liverpool Newcastle won't decide who gets a shot at qualifying for the Champions League. Liverpool will finish fourth. How to finance the strategy designed to cut the 28-point gap to Arsenal is next on the agenda. And continued criticism of Gerard Houllier lit the red touch paper of the Liverpool boss. Who do you think is the best striker in the world right now? Um, Thierry Henry, probably. His pace, skill, strength and his ability to score goals. I think he's an all-round striker. But how many French fans lie awake at night worrying about an 18-year-old lad from Liverpool? He's not scared of anything. He just plays, you know, like... Um, and that's the thing uh, I think people love about him is he plays like he was playing in the park. The whole country was waiting for someone like that to come for a long time, you know, kind of a new Gascoigne. And uh, he has the ability to be like him, but I think the pressure was really hard uh, for him to go through. Like, you know, we saw it at the beginning of the season, he had a bit of difficulty to come, uh, to come through that. But then he showed that he was a, a great player and he had a great mentality because since, since that he, he's been scoring for England and he's been scoring for Everton. Have you um, found the challenge of playing regular international matches now? At first, I was a bit nervous. Then, obviously, I've been in the squad a few times now. Had a few games, and um, I just every time I go, I feel more relaxed. So, gets better each time. 
To play for your national team is something amazing. Winning things as well with your national team is just something, something amazing because you're part of the, you know, there is a lot of people in France and you're part of, what, 22 players who are supposed to be the best in France, so uh, that's always great. In the 98 World Cup, Michael Owen made his name most notably in the game against Argentina, and you were only 12. But do you remember watching that? Yeah, I remember watching it, yeah. Um, I was sitting in my nan's chair watching it. Then um, I, was, I was nervous just watching this. It was a great goal, and I just thought, I remember just going out after the, after the game, then trying to do it in the street, so uh, it was just a great game. So he was an inspiration for you, and now you're playing up front with him. Yeah. How, does, how does that feel? Obviously, I can't like just be sitting next to him and like just be staring at him and star stuff, whatever. So um, it's good to be there around top players like them. It's going to be special, obviously. Uh, uh, See, my wife is English, so it's going to be even more special. So, but that's the way it is, you know. I, I will be French, and I am French, but I will be even more French on the day, and um, you know, that's the way it is. Okay, Wayne, this is the scenario England, France, 1 1. You scored for England, Henri scored for France. Would you swap your shirt with him at the end? Um, if he wants me his shirt, he can have it. <laughs> It's just a day for a bit of history at Highbury, but I wonder whether it's even occurred to you that Arsenal might lose this game and Preston's bit of history of a hundred and more years ago could remain unique. It certainly occurred to Arsene Wenger, which is why with Edu and Gilberto available to him again, he is picking his first 11 and taking no chances against a relegated Leicester side ravaged by injury. Incidentally, I haven't had it confirmed that an unbeaten Premiership season necessarily comes guaranteed with everlasting life, but you know what he means by immortality, and it's one game away. In this envelope are the names of the lucky winners of the On The Ball Awards for 2004. Perhaps the most coveted prize in British football. So straight to the top and the On The Ball Award for the big player with the big name and the big boots to match. Men like Big David or Little Dennis or even medium-sized Stevie. And with me to announce the winner is Bob from Illinois. Bob, it's all yours. Alrighty. And the winner is... Yep. Patrick Valeria. Vieira. Vieira. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Patrick. However you pronounce it, there's no looking past Captain Immortal. He's over the door, the guarantee. Look a little bit. He's ever so good at French, isn't he? Thank you very much, sir. No Congratulations. Problem. Thank that you. That's very good. And you know what? You can keep that. Yeah? The nominees for the Serious Bravery Award include referee Matt Messias for taking on Robbie Savage, Uriah Rennie for taking off Fergie, Claude McAlealy for showing exemplary restraint and dignity in the face of, well, fearsome provocation. But the winner of this award is a local lad. Go ahead, Martin. And the winner is Jimmy Bullard. Jimmy Bullard of Wigan, about to make his big entrance. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I'll be careful now where I shower, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll go in the ladies now. <laughs> Excuse please. Can I just get through? Cheers. Oh, Got some awards to give out, that's all. The 2004 Whisper of the Year Award. How about Emil Heskey to AC Milan? Claudia Ranieri to stay at Chelsea? Rivaldo to commit to anyone other than himself. But the winner? Rude to Madrid. So do you think he's going to go? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, Leeds fans. Pick up the Gwyneth Paltrow gong for best weeping. Jens Lehmann. Jens Lehmann. Jens Lehmann. Wins the Peter Schmeichel Award for mouthy goalkeeping. Carlos Alberto. Of Porto for services to dispelling the myth that your Continental likes to roll around a lot. Don't fancy carrying that for a bit, do you? No, you're all right. <laughs> and so to survival against the odds. Claudia Ranieri, Notts County, Buster's old boots. We can't afford to lose any balls, you know. Or Portsmouth. But they didn't win it either. Take it away, Derek. No more than the Old Athletic. No 
out of gas, out of dosh, and out of luck, but living on to fight another day. <laughs> got it. Well done. Congratulations, Oldham Athletic. Well done. Give it over. The winner is Ian Holloway. Ian Holloway. Ian Holloway. Yeah, Yep, he stood alone, the poet of the post-match interview, untouchable. Every dog has his day, and today, for me, is Woof Day. What is this, award winner? What have I won? Patrick Vieira's been... got one of them. Has he? Beautiful. Get in there. And so, to the Claudio Ranieri, here today, gone tomorrow, Lifetime Achievement Award. And the winner is... Claudio Ran... <coughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Hiya. Is Claudio that? Can I leave this for him? Yeah, Claudio, the manager. Cheers. And finally, the most underrated art in football, the nil-nil draw. Again, only one name in the hat. Sven Joran Eriksson. Himself. Thank you very much for and, that. Uh, good luck in Portugal. Thank and, you. Uh, bring back something a little bit better than that. Yeah, yeah. I hope so. Okay. That is nice. Well, it's okay. Yeah. Thank God for Sven. He makes us all feel a little bit better about ourselves. <laughs> I think Bob from Illinois deserves yeah, he something. He scored Bob from Illinois. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you don't come across too many Bobs every day, do you? Um, you two have picked your favourite moments uh, from the season as well. Shall we start with uh, Robbie and uh, see what mm -hmm. you've gone for? Well, I think just the emergence of centre-forward play in one guy in particular this season has been unbelievable. The only person I'm talking about is Thierry Henry. I mean, when I was growing up, centre forwards were big, cumbersome players who stood in the middle of the goal and waited for crosses to come in. This guy, guy's just rewritten the, the books in, in terms of the way he plays, his pace, his power. The fear that he injects into uh, opposition defenders is, is unbelievable. And, and now he's set the level for young strikers in the country to be training day, day in, day out at what you've got to do. And uh, he's had a fantastic year. I'm sure as a former centre forward, you appreciate his art as well, Ali, but you've gone for somebody different and a different moment in time. Absolutely. I think we all know how emotional football is. It's an emotional game and it's people with reactions. And I think Claudio Ranieri's reaction when Chelsea knocked Arsenal out of the, the Champions League with that Wayne Bridge goal, fabulous goal, and just look at the emotion in the man's face. I just feel he's been very, very poorly treated, to say the least, by Chelsea. With, you know, the, the rumours about Ericsson getting his job and Mourinho, but that was fantastic. We'll definitely miss him, there's no doubt, if he does go from Chelsea. And just very briefly, we, Arsenal there, a low point for them, but today could be a, a huge high, couldn't it, if they manage yeah. to eclipse that record? And I can't see them not doing it. it it's all destined for them, and they've deserved it the way they've played. It's an outrageous, uh, outrageous season for Arsenal, really, is, to go through a season undefeated. Congratulations to them and to you two for all your contributions to On The Ball uh, over the last few seasons. That's just about it from the On The Ball team. We'll leave you now with our tribute to a cracking season and a magnificent team who are just 90 minutes away from making history. Thank you for always being with us. Bye-bye. You can play a fantastic football, but in the end, if you don't win a trophy, that will mean nothing. We got some mistake after we lost against Chelsea. Fair enough, they were better than us on that day, they won. I feel uh, that we couldn't deal psychologically with the situation. It's what a Varsha and Chocolate both got in common. They both melt down at Easter. And turned in by Sammy Happier after their awful week. Just the start that Arsenal didn't want. Sometimes you get through a season and, and you, you just things just fall your way. The real Ferdinand continues to enjoy the support of the club. Each club is their opportunity to create history. The bubble is burst, as they say, you know. We're not Sheffield Wednesday or Barnsley, we're Leeds United. Our 
always the gladiator dream. <laughs> We lost the plot. And so then made Sammy happier after their awful week. Just the start that Arsenal didn't want. It was a turning point to win the league. The return of the wealth, their fashion is smashing his Alright. Last time who got nowhere near it. And still going, Thierry Henry! This is Robert Perez, it's Thierry Henry, is there anybody better? It's unbelievable! The me and the microphone is still magnetic, straight off the top. I knew I'd be forced to... The Premiership has never had finer champions! To win the league without losing a game, I don't think you can see that every year. With more vision and TV, I find it easy catching down, beating for fly speed. Sit back and wait to hear slam the track.